Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! to rather more serious matters. Or, or, well, I mean, there's nothing more serious than some of the elements of the American presidential campaign. But, but the, the surrealism that has just increased every time you think things have got as bonkers as they could possibly get, they get even more bonkers, and, and uh, more lately in a really, really ugly way. I don't quite get it. I mean, I, I get the odd sort of slightly mad email or, or, or text. I've got one here from someone called Anne who says, uh, tells me how awful the Clintons are and then says you shouldn't be able to talk about Donald Trump because you've never met him. So I presume she's on intimate terms with the Clintons. She's allowed to express vile opinions about them. Here, here's the deal, right? Uh, there were uh, three or four stories in the Clintons' past involving, first of all, allegations that Bill Clinton had propositioned women who didn't want to be propositioned, one of whom was paid a lot of money to go away um, because that was the alternative to a president actually fighting a legal battle. So the, the choice there is do we pay the money or do we actually have a president going to court? No evidence or proof of guilt, but hey, if he's propositioned a woman who didn't want to be propositioned, then he's a scumbag. It got reported, it got investigated, everybody knew about it. The same with two other accusations against him. Hillary Clinton was the defense lawyer for a, uh, a man accused of raping a 12-year-old girl. He was convicted. The most fundamental tenet of justice uh, in the civilized world is that you get a defense. Do you know why that man needed a defense lawyer, having been accused of raping a 12-year-old girl? Do you know why it's really important that he had a defense lawyer? No? Trump fans? Come on. Yeah, in case you ever get accused of raping a 12-year-old girl. That's why it imp it's important that he had a defense lawyer. It's the only way you can absolutely ensure that everybody gets one. And then some years later, when she was being interviewed about a number of issues, she commented that this man, who was convicted and guilty, had passed a lie detector test. So she commented then that that had influenced her opinions of lie detector tests henceforth, and she chuckled wryly, as you would. But apparently this is evidence that she laughs at rape victims and the man accused of raping the 12-year-old girl got off. These are facts, okay? Facts. And somehow the world has become so twisted that they are afforded <laughs> almost the same weight in the minds of these weird, weird Americans and Brits as a catalogue, a catalogue of allegation and accusation against Donald Trump, but also an admission. A man can stand up and boast about being a sex pest, and somehow that is forgivable because the husband of the woman that he's running against was once accused of propositioning somebody who didn't want to be propositioned. That, this is what we've allowed to happen. It's a massive failure of journalism, just as Brexit was. A huge failure of journalism, because proper journalists and proper journalism has not found a way to counter the stuff that is made up but looks like news. This is what the internet has done. It has allowed people. I first saw it with EDL and Islam. I got had a, a friend who, who used to tell me how awful Islam was, and I found out where he was getting his information from. He was going on these sort of EDL type sites and reading racists describing what the Quran really meant, and, and coming away with the idea that all Muslims were this and all Muslims were that. And, and because these some of these websites looked like proper websites, they looked like news people have clearly started affording them the same sort of weight. So the absolute toxicity of Donald Trump's sexual conduct in the past is glossed over on a website, and Bill Clinton's uh, behavior in the past is, is exaggerated and lied about, but in a way that looks like news, and people who are desperately searching to have their prejudices enforced and their bigotries enhanced argue until they're blue in the face that these two things are exactly the same. That, I'm afraid, wh wh whether you like it or not, that's just truth. A lot of people don't like truth, which is why we're living in the world that we're living in at the moment. That's just truth. And when Donald Trump stands up and talks about, as he has done now, media conspiracies and everybody's against him. For his part, Donald Trump is denying all of the accusations against him. He dismissed all of it as lies and a smear, and in some cases is going after his accusers now. NBC's Katie Turr is outside Trump Tower in Midtown Manhattan for us tonight. Katie, good evening. 
Hey there, Brian. Tonight, a little bit earlier ago in Ohio, Donald Trump wasn't giving up, calling the negative headlines against him a conspiracy and laying out a vast shadowy operation where the media, the Department of Justice, Wall Street banks and the establishment are all working together to get Hillary Clinton elected by smearing him with allegations of sexual misconduct. These claims are all fabricated. They're pure fiction and they're outright lies. After the Trump campaign promised a scorched earth campaign, the candidate was back on the campaign trail in West Palm Beach, Florida, taking on Hillary Clinton. Honestly, she should be locked up. Should be. And taking aim at the New York Times, People Magazine and others for multiple stories from women alleging unwanted groping, kissing and other sexual misconduct. They are claims Team Trump denies and NBC News has not been able to independently verify. And so now we address the slander and libels that was just last night thrown at me by the Clinton machine and the New York Times and other media outlets as part of a concerted, coordinated and vicious attack. These vicious claims about me of inappropriate conduct with women are totally and absolutely false. And the Clintons know it, and they know it very well. The candidate's comments on the trail come after lawyers for Donald Trump threatened to sue the New York Times for its story detailing the claims of two different women accusing Trump of unwanted sexual conduct. The letter says in part, your article is reckless, defamatory, and constitutes libel. Lawyers for the New York Times responded with their own letter, which the Times published on its website. Quote, the essence of a libel claim, of course, is the protection of one's reputation. Mr. Trump has bragged about his non-consensual sexual touching of women. He has bragged about his intruding on beauty pageant contestants in their dressing rooms. He acquiesced to a radio host request to discuss Mr. Trump's own daughter as a piece of ass. Nothing in our article has had the slightest effect on the reputation that Mr. Trump, through his own words and actions, has already created for himself. We publish newsworthy information about a subject of deep public concern. If Mr. Trump disagrees, we welcome the opportunity to have a court set him straight. One of the women featured in the New York Times story, Jessica Leeds, repeated her claim that Trump groped her on an airplane over 30 years ago in another interview tonight. He was grabbing my breasts and trying to turn me towards him and, and kissing me. and. Then after a bit, that's when his hands started going. I was wearing a skirt, and he, his hands started going towards my knee and up my skirt. Adding to the headlines today is a news story from the Huffington Post, also not independently verified by NBC News, alleging lewd conduct by Donald Trump from the 1990s. The site spoke to a businesswoman named Lisa Boyne, who says while at a restaurant with Trump and others, Trump paraded women in front of their table, looked under women's skirts, and commented on whether they were wearing underwear. And following up on its story yesterday, BuzzFeed News Today reported a fifth teenage beauty queen contestant saying Donald Trump entered the dressing room where she and others were changing. Victoria Hughes, the former Miss New Mexico Teen USA, said, quote, it was certainly the most inappropriate time to meet us all for the first time. The youngest girl was 15 and I was the eldest at 19. Other contestants, however, told BuzzFeed they don't remember seeing Trump. Donald, do you ever discuss sex with your daughter? No. You do not? No. And that's not all. More old footage of Donald Trump on an episode of the Howard Stern Show surfaced today. This from 2006. You know about sexual predators and things like that. Right. I mean, uh, you sure. are one. All right, that, I was going to say that. But, uh, <laughs> on the trail this afternoon, Trump repeatedly blamed his opponent, the media, the Democratic Party, everyone but himself, while responding to allegations that he forced himself on a People magazine reporter 12 years ago. Trump even seemed to make a comment about her appearance. Take a look. You take a look. Look at her. Look at her words. You tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. Right now, Trump is in full crisis mode, his inner circle shrinking. 
as confidants like Chris Christie and Newt Gingrich distance themselves. What is going on behind the scenes that you know right now that, that might be a reason why these, these needles are not being threaded the way they should be? I, I, I honestly don't know. I'm mystified. I, I, can't, I can't make sense out of it. The scorched earth campaign proving it will set fire to anything that stands in its way. I will not allow the Clinton machine to turn our campaign into a discussion of their slanders and lies, but will remain focused on the issues facing the American people. This idea, let's think about this for a minute, this idea that somewhere in Hillary Clinton's headquarters, there's a special office where they're priming women to come forward and accuse Donald Trump of sexually assaulting them. That, that is what he's now selling to the American public. The idea that there's like a, a dark ops, a special ops office somewhere in Hillary Clinton's headquarters that is uh, deliberately bringing forward women and, and somehow doctoring tapes. How, I mean, how does he explain that when, when the 10-year-old girl is going up the escalator at Trump Tower and he turns to camera and says, I'll be dating her in 10 years. How about that? Thursday night. You're going up the escalator? I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Can you go You can hear him say, I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Can you believe it? That's a sexually loaded comment about a 10 year old girl and still the trump supporters claim that oh it's nothing compared to what hillary clinton has done then they look at the money a man who lost a billion pounds in one year and probably hasn't paid income tax since they say well she's just as bad as well because 82 percent of donations to the clinton foundation actually went to good causes so that's an equivalence apparently a woman who spent 30 years working at the highest level of politics is somehow comparable to a man who is just a crook with a weird face and even weirder hair. It's quite bizarre how we've allowed this to happen. But I'm not going to get all frustrated again. It's going to be uh, a repeat of, of the shows earlier in this week when uh, there's an awful lot of banging of heads on tables as people sort of realised, God, yeah, I have been sold an enormous con, an enormous pup with regard to the EU referendum. This is different because this is about sex abuse and uh, borderline rape and sexual assault. And it's, it's why when Michelle Obama spoke yesterday in a relatively small gymnasium in America, it, it, it's why the, the words that she said and the tone that she employed were so powerful because it was almost as if, it was almost as if you, you were living in a world where everybody was, you know that Queen Elizabeth, before she died, thought she was still gorgeous. Queen Elizabeth was, I, I, I think she used lead on her face, her face was falling apart, all her teeth had fallen out, the two teeth she had left were black, she, she, she had sort of disgusting diseases, she was absolutely rancid by the time that she died, but she still thought she was gorgeous. She still thought she was really beautiful. She'd invite sort of 25-year-old courtiers into her bedchamber. And they, she still, do you know why she still thought she was gloriously gorgeous? Because everybody told her. Everybody kept telling her she was beautiful. So what happened um, yesterday with regard to uh, Michelle Obama's speech was that finally somebody turned to the Queen and said, you're, you're, you're a rattled old crone. And that's what she couldn't understand, why it needed to be said. This is so obviously ugly, this behavior. It's so obviously hideous that she genuinely couldn't understand why she had to call it out. And my goodness me, she called it out well. And now here I am, out on the campaign trail in an election where we have consistently been hearing hurtful, hateful language about women. Language that has been painful for so many of us, not just as women, but as parents trying to protect our children and raise them to be caring, respectful adults. And as citizens who think that our nation's leaders should meet basic standards of human decency. The, the fact is that in this election, we have a candidate for president of the United States, who over the course of his lifetime and the course of this campaign has said things about women that are so shocking, so demeaning, that I, I simply will not repeat anything here today. And last week, we saw this candidate actually bragging about sexually assaulting women. And I can't believe that I'm saying that a candidate for president of the United States has bragged about sexually assaulting women. 
And I have to tell you that I, I can't stop thinking about this. It has shaken me to my core in a way that I couldn't have predicted. So while I'd love nothing more than to pretend like this isn't happening and to come out here and do my normal campaign speech, it would be dishonest and disingenuous to me to just move on to the next thing like this was all just a bad dream. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. Because this was not just a lewd conversation. This wasn't just locker room banter. This was a powerful individual speaking freely and openly about sexually predatory behavior and actually bragging about kissing and groping women, using language so obscene that many of us were worried about our children hearing it when we turn on the TV. And to make matters worse, <laughs> it now seems very clear that this isn't an isolated incident. It's one of countless examples of how he has treated women his whole life. And I have to tell you that I listen to all of this and I feel it so personally. And I'm sure that many of you do too, particularly the women. The shameful comments about our bodies the disrespect of our ambitions and intellect, the belief that you can do anything you want to a woman. It is cruel. It's, it's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts. It, it, it hurts. It's like that sick, sinking feeling you get when you're walking down the street, minding your own business, and some guy yells out vulgar words about your body. Or when you, you see that guy at work that stands just a little too close, stares a little too long, and makes you feel uncomfortable in your own skin. It's that feeling of terror and violation that too many women have felt when someone has grabbed them or forced himself on them and they've said no, but he didn't listen. Something that we know happens on college campuses and countless other places every single day. It reminds us of stories we've heard from our mothers and grandmothers about how back in their day, the boss could say and do whatever he pleased to the women in the office. And even though they worked so hard, jumped over every hurdle to prove themselves, it was never enough. We thought all of that was ancient history, didn't we? And so many have worked for so many years to end this kind of violence and abuse and disrespect, but here we are in 2016 and we're hearing these exact same things every day on the campaign trail. We are drowning in it. And all of us are doing what women have always done. We're trying to keep our heads above water, just trying to get through it, trying to pretend like this doesn't really bother us. Maybe because we think that admitting how much it hurts makes us as women look weak. Maybe we're afraid to be that vulnerable. Maybe we've grown accustomed to swallowing these emotions and staying quiet because we've seen that people often won't take our word over his. Or maybe we don't want to believe that there are still people out there who think so little of us as women. Too many are treating this as just another day's headline, as if our outrage is overblown or unwarranted, as if this is normal, just politics as usual. But New Hampshire, yeah, be clear. This is not normal. This is not politics as usual. This is disgraceful. It is intolerable. And it doesn't matter what party you belong to, Democrat, Republican, Independent, no woman deserves to be treated this way. None of us deserves this kind of abuse. And I, I know it's a campaign, but this isn't about politics. 
It's about basic human decency. It's about right and wrong. And we simply cannot endure this or expose our children to this any longer, not for another minute and let alone for four years. Now is the time for all of us to stand up and say enough is enough. This has got to stop right now. Because consider this, if all of this is painful to us as grown women, what do you think this is doing to our children? What messages are our little girls hearing about who they should look like, how they should act? What lessons are they learning about their value as professionals, as human beings, about their dreams and aspirations? And how is this affecting men and boys in this country? Because I can tell you that the men in my life do not talk about women like this. And I know that my family is not unusual. And to dismiss this as everyday locker room talk is an insult to decent men everywhere. The men that you and I know don't treat women this way. They are loving fathers who are sickened by the thought of their daughters being exposed to this kind of vicious language about women. They are husbands and brothers and sons who don't tolerate women being treated and demeaned and disrespected. And like us, these men are worried about the impact this election is having on our boys who are looking for role models of what it means to be a man. In fact, someone recently told me a story about their six-year-old son who one day was uh, watching the news. They were watching the news together and the little boy out of blue said, I think Hillary Clinton will be president. And his mom said, well, why do you say that? And this little six-year-old said, because the other guy called someone a piggy. And he said, you cannot be president if you call someone a piggy. So even a six-year-old knows better. A six-year-old knows that this is not how adults behave. This is not how decent human beings behave. And this is certainly not how someone who wants to be president of the United States behaves. And, and I, I get that. I think as a father of two girls, and, and I apologize for doing this because I know it's not right. It should just be these are human beings and they are uh, witnessing an environment where people are apologizing and uh, justifying sexual abuse. But I'm afraid it is because I'm a father of two girls that I find it terrifying that a man can stand up in public and boast about grabbing young women by the genitals and not be hounded out of town immediately. I know politics is a, is a dirty word and a, a dirty world. It's just incredible what we've allowed to happen to us, isn't it? it? This is a man boasting about grabbing women by the genitals and filmed talking about a 10-year-old girl being someone he will date in a decade. A man whose 17-year-old daughter had to ask him to promise not to date anybody younger than him and a man around whom women are now queuing up to accuse him of inappropriate touch. Well, to accuse him of all the things he boasted about doing when he was filmed without his knowledge in the back of that car. That, that's the point. Now, the real beauty here, the absolute beauty here, is his suggestion that he might sue for libel. And the New York Times have responded to his suggestion that he might sue them for libel by pointing out that the most fundamental tenet of libel is reputational damage. You can only be libeled if you can prove that your reputation has been damaged. Donald Trump cannot sue women for libel for accusing him of sexual assault because he is on the record boasting about doing it. There can be no reputational damage if you're being accused of something that you have boasted about doing in the past. Now, what you have here is a situation that is as stone-cold simple as it's possible to be. A man accused of sex assault can't sue over it because it's true and also because it's not going to damage his reputation because he's already boasted about being a man who commits sexual assault. 
And because there are now these weird television stations like Fox and these weird radio programs that people get an undiluted diet of lies from, that's the point. Undiluted diet. Every, you will go online now and you'll be able to find, if you want, accounts of everything I've just said that are wrong. Oh, it's not true that this happened. And anyway, Bill Clinton did this and whatever. And what about that? While a man stands up in public, and this is even worse than what's gone before, okay? Even worse than what's gone before. This is Donald Trump, and you can contradict me on this one, okay? 0345 is the number that you need. I think this is Donald Trump saying there's no way he would have sexually assaulted this woman because she's not attractive enough. And he thinks this is a defense against accusations that he sexually assaults people. The idea that because this woman... Well, you, you'll listen to the words in a minute. Maybe there's a different interpretation here. If there is, I want it, and I want it now. 0345 6060 okay? Because this, to me, this is only yesterday, and this is a man effectively saying, there's no way I'd have sexually assaulted her. She's not attractive enough to be sexually assaulted. Take a look. You take a look. Look at her. Look at her words. You tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. So seriously, if you are one of these chomping chug nuts who, who absolutely buys into the notion that Donald Trump is anything other than a sociopathic sex pest, lucky enough to inherit a serious amount of money, if you genuinely are in that camp, my God, I pity you, but you explain to me now how on earth that is anything other than a man accused of sexual assault claiming that it can't be true because she's not pretty enough for me to sexually assault. And that leads us now to the question, okay, which is, in your view, how the hell has it come to this? 0345 973 And if you are uh, uh, screaming at the radio that, that it's all a mainstream media conspiracy and this is uh, a cultural shit, blah, 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 all that nonsense, absolute nonsense, okay, then you need to tell me how you think you've ended up cheering for a sex pest. Because I'm pretty sure you didn't think you were ever going to be that person. The person who cheers for a man who talks about his sexual ambitions regarding a 10-year-old girl. Because I shall tell you this, and I shall tell you this once. If you were under any illusions whatsoever about how Jimmy Savile got to molest and rape and abuse and assault women, men, boys, girls on an industrial scale for decades, if like me you used to be completely baffled about how it could possibly have happened, go and talk today to a Trump supporter. Go and talk right now to a Trump apologist. Go and read right now the defenders of Donald Trump. And that right there is precisely how Jimmy Savile got to ruin thousands of young lives while the people around him did nothing. Donald Trump, Jimmy Savile. Peas in a pod. So, so save your far-right regurgitations of ludicrous websites masquerading as news sources and just tell me how you think, if you are on the other side of this argument from me, how you think you've ended up on the same side of history as a man who boasts about wanting to have sex with a 10-year-old girl. Okay, that's all we're going to do. That's what I want to hear. Tom's in Dromfield. Tom, what would you like to say? Hello, how are you? Very well, Tom. What's on your mind? Excellent. Okay, so I don't think he's as bad as people are putting across. Um, Yes, he said stupid things, but what you have to remember is the way the American political system just, just, works. Just wait, wait there a second. Uh, let's yep. just remind ourselves of people who aren't fully au fait. You know, and she used to be great. She's still very beautiful. I moved on her, actually. You know, she was down on Palm Beach. I moved on her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I, I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. You know, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was... And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took off her and I moved on her like a bitch, but I couldn't get there, and she was married. Then all of a sudden I see her, she's now got the big phony tits and everything, she's totally changed her look. She's your girl's hot as shit, in the purple. Whoa! Whoa. Yes! Whoa! Whoa. Yes, the Donald is good! Whoa! <laughs> oh, my man! Wait, wait, you gotta look at me when Just you get out of your life. That is very Will you give me the thumbs up? Okay, you are a piece. You gotta put the thumbs up. You gotta okay. get the thumbs up. Okay. Can't be too happy. Else off first? Yeah, let me. It's very funny. Maybe it's a different one. It better not be the publicist. No, it's it's her. Yeah, that's her with the gold. I'm gonna use some tic tacs just in case I start kissing her. 
You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. When you're a star, you can do whatever you want, okay? And then a 10-year-old girl going up an escalator at Trump Tower, I'll be dating her in 10 years. He is thinking of sex while looking at a 10-year-old girl. But you tell me why it's not that bad, Tom. The reason why it's not that bad is if, if he get, becomes elected, Congress will basically block everything that he does. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about, we're talking about the mindset of people who defend him. And you just did. You said he's not that bad. I, I, I hesitate to ask you this, but do you have any children? I do, yeah, I have two. The boys or girls? I have a boy and a girl. How old's your daughter? Two, um, my daughter's two. Okay, so uh, at what age does it become acceptable for a grown man to see her as a potential future sexual conquest? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it's a question, a, not a point. Could you answer it now? Um, Seven? No, it's not really. Ten? It's not really uh, Eleven? acceptable to say those things. Hang on, you just said he's not as bad as the media portray him. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference, there's a difference here. I'm not saying he's... I'm not saying he's a you still haven't answered my question. At what point does it become acceptable for a grown man to talk about our daughters as potential sexual conquests? Well, what about the... the no, 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 you just did something there. Did you hear that word you just used? What about, you said. There's a new phrase called what aboutery. And when people have been pushed to a position when they realise that they're defending the indefensible, they start the next sentence with the word what about. Well, what about? Hit what about. Answer the question. At what point would you be comfortable with a grown man viewing your daughter as a potential sexual conquest? Uh, the legal sexual age for that country. So, so he's not that bad? And you'd let the country decide rather than your own personal morality, the legal sexual age for that country. Well, he's eight years under it. And you're sticking up for him. How do you think you've been led to this place? I'm not, I'm not really sticking up You phoned me up and you said he's not that bad, Tom. I want you to tell me how you think you've been turned into someone who hears a man expressing sexual thoughts about a ten-year-old girl and rings a national radio station to say he's not that bad. Okay, well, can I reverse No, the no, you can't. You need to answer my question. How do you think you've been turned into that person? By realising that what he's saying is essentially just complete waffle and you can completely ignore it. It doesn't mean anything. He could sit there in front of you and say, oh, by the way, I'm actually, you know, a transsexual duck or whatever. Okay, I've, I've, you, you, you've had your chance, all right? I, I, and I suppose it's easier to talk nonsense than it is to admit that you've made a complete fool of yourself. Bill's in Wandsworth. Bill, what's going on? What is actually going on? I, yeah, well, it's interesting, James. I have these chats with my friends a lot of the time. Um, I work in air safety. I'm an air safety professional, and uh, we look at causes of accidents and uh, yeah. over the years. And there's two concepts that, that keep coming forward, and one of them is called confirmation bias. Yes. Have you heard of that before? Of course I have, yes. Where yeah, I'm, 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 I say I'm, not everyone does, but it means that people uh, reject information that doesn't match their worldview. So uh, well, they don't just reject it, they, they, they now actively avoid it. So you will go on the websites, you will go onto social media, and you will only ever encounter worldviews and reports that entirely reflect your own wrong uh, prejudices. Yep, absolutely. But the point being, this is a very powerful human factor. It's something that people do. If they're convinced of something, uh, it's very, very hard to to, to, uh, to make the... Even if something is factually there, it's undeniable in fact, they will deny it until they hit it, if it's a mountain or something like that. So yes. that's one aspect of it. The second aspect would be uh, something, again, which I'm sure you familiar with, normalisation of deviance, where uh, people keep pushing the rules, they keep operating just outside the boundaries of what's considered normal, uh, and this generally results in behavior that that then ends up crossing a boundary and uh listening to trump talk about women i, I totally agree with you it's you know his behavior because it's so everywhere people just after what it just becomes noise and how do you mean how, how, how do you mean that I, I don't know that phrase the, the normalization of deviance i know yeah, i know what well, it means it's, obviously but but it's I'll, it's i'll give you yeah. an example relating to an aircraft accident uh just in a yeah. general sense Please. uh when pilots uh, don't observe the rules, okay, they operate outside standard operating procedures, they may get away with that 10 times, 100 times. But one day, uh, they will push the boundary. It becomes a normal behavior of them to deviate outside of the norms, if you like. And um, So it's like a sort of almost, almost as if you're grooming a society then? Yeah, exactly that. And 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 uh, it, it, in, a, in, a, in an aircraft sense, it means that rules that most people stick to and obey and would be 
they wouldn't push those rules because they start breaking little rules, these guys, things like, you know, well, things that he says, they, they then become actions and they become acts and, and it can end uh, historically in some pretty nasty aircraft accidents. I get that. So, 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 so it just it, it seeps. So uh, I guess I like that phrase, the grooming of society. That's what it is, isn't it? And that's what Jimmy Savile did as well. And, and of course, talking about his own daughter. He said, she does have a very nice figure. I've said, if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. Yeah, she's really something, and what a beauty, that one. If I weren't I happily married, and, really you know, her nice father. Nice. Although she does have a very nice figure. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know, <laughs> you know who's one of the great beauties of the world, according to everybody, and I helped create her? Who? Ivanka. My she daughter, is. Ivanka. Yeah. She's six feet tall. She's got the best body. Yeah, she's hot. We want to know a little bit more about you guys, so we play this game here. It's called Fave Five. I'll ask the question. Uh, Ivanka, you answer first, and then, Dad, you answer uh, also. This is tough. Okay, Ivanka, <laughs> what's the favorite thing you have in common with your father? Either real estate or golf. Donald, with your daughter? Well, I was going to say sex, but I can't relate that. To I mean, that is... I mean, what I find astonishing, and I don't know if you've got a view on this, people who are hearing that and getting cross with me, what, what, what's happened to them? What's gone wrong with them? Well, I just think that they've heard so much of this stuff, like your previous caller, it's, it's just this noise that he makes, but they're not actually listening. They're, he they're, they're hearing the noises, but they don't listen to what he's saying. Now, as Michelle Obama said, you know, yeah. this man is admitting to the sort of offence that we put people in prison for in this country. Yes. And he's admitting to it, and he's not even denying it. He's, oh, okay, I said it, but, but, he's, but then the evidence comes forward. I would love him to sue uh, the newspaper for libel because I think they would then be able to bring a hell of a lot more stuff into the, uh, into the public arena. And, and, and also, there can, be, there can be no reputational damage if you're accusing a man of doing something he's boasted about doing. It's, I mean, it's, that's the point for me at which I realise the world had truly cracked. Exactly. Can I just say? Um, yes, of course. I think that's what I say about this. Got to say, I, I I I haven't been watching listening to your show recently because of work, but I did <laughs> the the the, uh, the Facebook spreading of the the chat with the banana oh, the EU debate. That's, that's brilliant. Well, yeah. Well, it's not though, is it? It's it's it's, it's, it's tragic. Not, but do you know what the Trump supporters exactly. said about that? Do you know what the yeah. British Trump supporting contingent said about that? Either that, uh, either that he was yeah. fake. Or, or, or that we deliberately vet yeah. the calls to only put through people that are stupid or, 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 or can't make an argument. That's the same thing, isn't it? That is confirmation bias. The same thing. My job, Great point. I have to deal with facts all the time. Me facts, too. Facts, facts, facts. And uh, a lot of people don't, I think. A lot of people maybe don't necessarily have to deal with facts on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's another one. Here's but another one. The whataboutery. Yeah. This is from someone called Carolyn. James O'Brien, such a hypocrite, going outraged about Trump sexualizing girls, doesn't say anything about Muslim men marrying young kids. How, how do you even yeah, begin it, to have it, a conversation it, with it, someone it, like that? But, 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 but because you're criticizing Trump doesn't mean you're condoning other forms of sexual abuse, does it? I mean, it's <laughs> quite, quite the opposite. And in fact, on the, with regard to the Northern Grooming Gangs, this program was way ahead of the curve on, uh, on wondering whether there would be cultural explanations for the proliferation of certain behaviours. But hey, I, I guess that's it, isn't it? Carolyn, with the greatest of respect, I don't think you could have been more stupid in a tweet. I just don't know how you could have got up this morning and said, I'm now going to send the stupidest tweet in the history of tweets. And, and you, you couldn't have done better than that. And yet you're sitting there now getting cross with me. So, Carolyn, you have allowed yourself to become a woman who defends a man who says that he might be dating his own daughter if he wasn't already married. Who looks at a 10-year-old girl and turns to his mates and says, oh, I could be dating her in 10 years. You tur you've turned in, Carolyn, to somebody who would stand by and clap if a man expressed sexual desire for your 10-year-old daughter. Why do I get cross? Because I'm on your side. I'm trying to help you stop being that person. But I don't know how to. And a simple question. How do you account for the fact that your neighbours, perhaps, your friends, your colleagues, people that you break bread with on a daily basis, have somehow, as a result of politics and media colliding in the last couple of years, been turned into people that will defend Donald Trump? And this isn't even a debate. The notion that there's a balance to be struck between defending him and not defending him is bogus. Utterly absurd. What has happened to our world so that a man who boasts about wanting to have sex with a 10-year-old girl at some distant point, at some later point in the future, how does that even enter his head, by the way? Can you imagine looking at a 10-year-old girl and thinking about dating or sex? Ever. 
And maybe you can. Maybe that's the big secret here. Maybe that's the big elephant in the room. People aren't disgusted by him because, yeah, I often look at 10-year-old girls and find myself framing sexual thoughts. That's, the, that's all I've got, okay? Occam's razor. The simplest explanation for behavior. People aren't disgusted by what Donald Trump does and says because they're not disgusted by what Donald Trump does and says. Because they don't think it's disgusting to frame sexual comments about your own daughter or a 10-year-old girl or to boast about. And the most amazing point in this saga is surely the point at which a man boasts about committing sexual assault. His supporters then attack anybody who accuses him of sexual assault. How can you attack the women accusing him of sexual assault when he's boasted about doing it himself? God, I wish Michelle Obama was running. It'd be over by now, wouldn't it? The whole, the whole, the whole shebang. That speech yesterday, I'm going to listen to it again. Can we hear it again? Can we have Michelle Obama again? I just think it just crystallized what every decent person on the planet must be feeling as they look at the Donald Trump story. You have a man effectively, uh, effectively, uh, effectively admitting to sex crimes and getting cheered. No wonder she sounds so frustrated. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. Because this was not just a lewd conversation. This wasn't just locker room banter. This was a powerful individual speaking freely and openly about sexually predatory behavior and actually bragging about kissing and groping women, using language so obscene that many of us were worried about our children hearing it when we turn on the TV. And to make matters worse, <laughs> it now seems very clear that this isn't an isolated incident. It's one of countless examples of how he has treated women his whole life. And I have to tell you that I listen to all of this and I feel it so personally. And I'm sure that many of you do too, particularly the women. The shameful comments about our bodies, the disrespect of our ambitions and intellect, the belief that you can do anything you want to a woman. It is cruel. It, it's, it's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts. And if, if there's any bafflement at all about how anybody, especially, I think she's right to distinguish, especially a woman, could feel anything but disgust at this, there are two answers. Some people make a living out of being disgusting, and, and they have to be more disgusting every day in order to keep their face in the paper or to keep their name in, the, in, in lights. So you just have to say disgusting things. What can you say today? Oh, I'm going to defend a sex assault boaster. So that, that's fine. It's not them. I, I, I've got no problem understanding them, the people who turn up on Fox News. They're getting paid for it. They're getting paid to lie and spew bile. Okay, it's a lucrative business. But the people in the room, the people on the sofa at home, they're not getting paid. They are choosing with no reward at all to defend a man who would look at their 10 year old daughter and think about sex. Even away from all the actual allegations, all the actual accusations. That's on the record, okay? A man who thinks that if you're a star, you can do whatever you want to women. Sitting at home on the sofa watching that, and the only answer I've got, well, there's two, actually. You're not disgusted by it because you're the same. That's the locker room defense. Yeah, everyone's like this. He's a silverback gorilla. Yeah, everyone's like this. Well, he, he looked like a big gorilla. Yeah. Prowling at uh, the set. And, you know, he is that big alpha male, that's who he is. Okay, that's one defense. You're not disgusted by this sort of behavior because you don't think it's disgusting. The only other one is that this man is giving a validation to, to, to such old-fashioned racism, I mean, pure, pure and simple racism, bigotry of the very, very first order. And you're so relieved that someone is allowing you to be that person in public. You're so relieved that you're allowed to call all Mexicans rapists or all Muslims pedophiles or all black people burglars, whatever it may be. You're so relieved that finally, after all these years of morally correct behavior, you're allowed to be disgusting again. You don't care if he is going to sexually assault your daughter because your desire to be publicly bigoted overrides your desire to protect your own children from sex assault. And if that's half a country in the case of America, then suddenly all the great mysteries of history are solved. How did Mussolini get to power? He allowed people to be vile. How did Hitler get to power? He gave people an invitation to be vile. How did these people get to power? It's not a mystery anymore. 
If a man can stand up and say about your 10-year-old daughter, yeah, I'll be dating her in 10 years, and you still think he's okay, that's how it happens. And what is it he offers you? that is so valuable and so wonderful that you're prepared to forgive the most vile, the most foul, the most obnoxious of behavior. What is it he offers you? He offers you a free pass on being racist. And for the women, the women will forgive the sexism because they're so attracted to the racism. That's where we are. There you go, that's my analysis. I'm not supposed to be answering all my own questions. Ben's in Shepherd's Bush. Ben, what do you think? Well, hello. I thought oh. that was a very good analysis you just said there. You're very kind. I, I was thinking just also that I think people get mesmerized by somebody's sense of entitlement um, if they see that somebody else thinks that they're entitled. Yeah make sexual comments, do lewd sexual deeds to power or whatever it might be, I think that's enough for a lot of people um, just to be washed away by somebody else's sense of self-belief. So it, 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 it it's, it's, a, it's a variation on what I just sort of clumsily tried to articulate. The idea that uh, uh, he, he gets away with this, so I'll get away with that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because it, it does it, it. I suppose in a way, it like, kind of trickles down, doesn't it? His prejudice allows them to indulge in a more diluted sort of form of prejudice, perhaps. And also, I think there's something like of the initiation in it as well, not just the relief, the perceived relief in some people's minds that we no longer have to um, be politically correct, morally and, correct, morally I correct. Yeah, morally correct. I think there's also something of the um, the initiation into something. This guy believes what he's saying, believes what he's doing. And it kind of reminds me of, like, vampires and things, like Hammer Horrors. Like, <laughs> victims become vampires, you know, in, in, the, in, a, in a matter of a second, don't they? And suddenly they're very different creatures. And you've got this hideous collective identity that starts starts building and brewing and, and so on. Still, we're not going to find the, the ultimate key, are we? Because we don't feel what they feel. And I guess you'd have to feel what they feel to be sure that that's what we're describing. And, 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 and in the absence of a better explanation, either you don't find sexually aggressive criminality a problem because you quite like to do it yourself and you admire a man who boasts about it, or he's offering you the freedom to be so vile that you've been so desperate to be for so long that you don't care what else he's offering you're allowed to to hate on black people again and you're allowed to hate on mexicans and immigrants and women and and people seeking mm. abortions or whatever it might be whatever whatever comes up next mm. and i mean i have a, a female friend who is an avowed a trumpite if that's a correct term and i mean you know i know but in short, I know vulnerable people who have probably actually uh, experienced some of the kind yes. of behaviour that he is indulging in. And it's almost like um, an abused partner making the excuses for the person that's been continuing. It's exactly what it's like. He's grooming America. That's what yeah. he's doing in the same way yeah. that Jimmy Savile groomed Britain. Yes, indeed. Strange times. And yet some people listening to this will be outraged at the mere suggestion that a man who boasts about sexually assaulting women is a man who boasts about sexually assaulting women. There's some interesting point here from Alex. I like this. It's quite long, but bear with me. Yeah, I wish I had time to call Jones. In brief, I've asked myself why I don't feel much when I hear all of what vile Trump chatters about, and I know why, as a woman. I suppose I feel my life has been scattered with men like him. It feels awful to write that, but it's true. Attractive women are subjected to sexualized behavior from men, obviously not all men, but many a man I have experienced to say the things I hear Trump say. It's not right, but it is... It is what it is. I wonder if you and all men who find this so abhorrent feel so passionately because you quite rightly don't want to be painted with the same brush. Keep up the good work. And Alex is a female. Did you know, that hadn't even cro crossed my mind. I did, th there's a personality distinction there as well, Alex. Because I get really confused by journalists who are angrier about famous people being accused of child abuse than they are actually about child abuse. And I think that's what it is. It, it, it's imagining what could happen to you. If you're a supremely selfish individual, you don't care about the notion of children being abused because you're not a child anymore. But if somebody famous gets accused of sex abuse and you're a prominent journalist, you're furious and frightened because that could happen to you as well. So yeah, I, I, maybe there is something in that, but if it is, in my case, it's subconscious. So what is gonna, what, what, what's it gonna be? People who are not disgusted by Donald Trump. Is it because A, they're not disgusted by men who frame sexual desires regarding 10 year olds, men who routinely grab women by the genitalia and boast about it, you don't find that disgusting. That would be the locker room silverback gorilla defense, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay, it's just not, it doesn't disgust me. Or is it B, you know it's disgusting and you would never ordinarily endorse somebody framing sexual thoughts regarding a 10 year old girl 
Carlisle, or speaking of his desire to date his own daughter, but because there's a chance he's going to bring back institutionalised mainstream racism on a scale that we haven't seen since the front half of the 20th century, you're going to overlook all the other stuff. Because your hate is so great, you're going to overlook all the other things that he represents hatred of. Or is there a third way that I'm not seeing? It's possible. Lex is in Southgate. Lex, what would you like to say? Hey James, thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think you know you just nailed a, a lot of the analysis that I was going to come with. But I think there's one thing I'd like to add to what you said, which mm. is that um, I think there's an, there is a frustration that he speaks to, yeah, um, that people have. It might be one small issue that people have cottoned onto that they they like that he's mentioned in one of his rants that they've cottoned onto and they've projected the rest of whatever frustrations and hopes and dreams they have on this on this candidate. And it's just a massive willful blindness of all of the all of the just horrible things that he said and horrible things that he represents and the horrible things that he's done because um, because they've decided to pin their hopes on this candidate. So it, it's kind of a willful blindness of what he's done and they haven't really looked into what he represents. So they don't actually realise that on most, most of the issues, most of the people... Well, he's not even a Conservative. That's the most remarkable right. thing about it politically. He's just a, he's just a sort of uh, turbo-powered opportunist. Absolutely. And ten years ago, he was a, he was, he was a Democrat. Well, he, <laughs> he, he was quoted yes. as saying Democrats do better for the economy in, in America than, than Republicans. They but but it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, almost as a, it's almost an evolutionary divide now. It's almost as if there are two types of human beings on the planet. Human beings who use their eyes to see and human beings who never open them. I mean, it is so obvious to anybody that, that, well, in my mind, it's so obvious to anybody that Donald Trump's disgusting. I can't quite conceive of, of circumstances in which he wouldn't be, except those two I've offered. You, you think that sex, yeah. sexual violence is acceptable behaviour, or you think that the green light he's going to give your bigotries is so attractive, you, you don't actually approve of sexual violence, but you're prepared to overlook it in this case because you love racism so much. But James, I think as well, it's the, there's a, the third one, which you kind of hinted at as well, which is that you talked about the whataboutery. Yes. That's a, that's a classic deflection, so you don't need to deal with the epic kind of cognitive dissonance that, that you're presented with that challenges your view that he's... Look over there, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, look over there. I'm not going to confront the fact that I'm now sticking up for a sex pest because Hillary Clinton and all oh, emails. It's consistent. So when you look at yeah, the media and you look point. at the people who speak for him, the basket of deplorables that Bill Maher calls them, yeah, they're the, these despicable people that kind of stand up for him on his campaign, mm. they, they immediately, it, it's very short, it's a very short transition from dealing with the issue that he's presented or the horrible thing that he's done to the deflection to whatever it is over there. It's classic misdirection. And because they keep talking and the speed with which they do it and the intensity with which they keep bringing additional other issues, for peop even for people who want to try and follow the debate or conversation, it gets, it gets confusing because you're kind of drowned in, in a kind of sea of other concerns which are really just uh, things to distract you from, from well, the case in point. So, and that's why interviewers have such a hard time with Donald Trump. Oh, I'd love to have a crack. I would love, I would love to have a crack. And the trick would be, as it is with all bigots and all bullies, just to ask the same question again and again and again until he answers it. But that, that's what the bigots and the bullies get away with. They, they either tell a lie or they'll throw out a soundbite or they'll move along. It's just odd, and, and I guess the twain will never meet. Uh, it, it's so strange. I can see why you're... Look, let's, let's pretend that racism is okay for a moment, all right? Let's pretend that calling all Mexicans rapists is acceptable behaviour. Why is that a, an insult? Why, why is calling all Mexicans rapists an insult? Oh, because rape is bad. Okay, so the bloke who said it is now being accused of pretty similar behaviour to the thing that was so awful, he accused an entire ethnicity of it. Uh, well, it's not that bad anymore, rape. It's not that bad. Uh, yeah, sex, sex, sex thoughts about 10-year-old girls, ah, it's not that bad. It's I mean, the only way, one American commentator said, you called all Mexicans rapists, and then you boasted about sexually assaulting women. The only way that could be more ironic is if you'd said it in Spanish. Nikki's in Hampstead. Nikki, what's on your mind? Oh, hi. I just wanted to address those two elements. One is the locker room chat in the trailer, and the other thing about his daughter. I think, I think this is all overinflated. I think, actually, he was applauding his daughter. I can think of many people in my family that say, my God, my daughter's so lovely. Um, when she's 20, she's going to be such a, a hit, you know. No, but, but he didn't say that. He said, I, I, I would be dating her. I wouldn't, but this is the important thing. It's a conditional. If she, if I were not married, if I were not her father, I would be dating her. So he's looking at his own daughter, daughter and thinking about sex. 
No, I don't think. I think you're misconstruing. Well, you think he's thinking about going out for ice cream when he says I'd be dating her. No, she, she's so on, voluptuous. She's it's, so voluptuous. It's political propaganda. He no, no. Th these are his words on tape. How can that be political yes, propaganda? I know, I know because you're 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 omitting the very important and crucial conditional conditional that's what i think anyway and well I let's examine that a little further so uh, uh, okay. to, to to look at your own daughter and think about sex just run by me how that's ever acceptable you're not thinking about sex with her why does he mention that she's voluptuous then and, and and talk about her figure she's got a great because figure when yeah when she will be a grown woman with a sense to sex she will be a real... You're quite dangerous, uh, if you don't mind me saying so. A man looks at his own daughter, describes her figure and her voluptuousness, talks about a desire to date her if only it wasn't happily married or, you know, her father, and you're defending him. No, he's not saying that. He's not... <laughs> well, we can go on forever now. He's saying she's... Well, we can only go on forever if you persist in being so wrong. <laughs> okay, fine. I, I understood it to him to be saying when she grows older and it looks like her body... Right, well, let me run it by you again. Number one, he never said when she grows older. He was talking about right now, how voluptuous she was and what a great figure he, he she has. And then he said, I would date her. I would probably date her, but you know I'm happily married. He doesn't even mention the fact that he's her dad first. He mentions the fact that he's married. And then he adds, and, you know, I'm her father. So there's no at some future point. He's looking at his daughter's body and he's thinking about sex. And you, Nikki, are defending him. I'm not defending him looking at... I'm sorry, you must have changed... Okay. You must be a different Nicky from the one that rang in in that no, case. No, no, I'm trying to stick to my... I'm trying to stick to my rational point. Can I go on, or do you want to stick with this, or drop the phone, or what? Well, are you defending a man who looks at his 17-year-old daughter and thinks about sex? Ten-year-old. Ten no, no, that wasn't even his daughter. That was somebody else's daughter going up an escalator at Trump Tower. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that a lot of men would look at seventeen-year-old women and want to have sex with them. Their own child. Women. I think we've probably no. we've probably taken this as far as it's going to go, Nikki, haven't we? But that that is what we are now. Someone in Hampstead, presumably someone who's read a book in her life, someone who's educated, phoning up a national radio station to talk about framing sexual thoughts about ten-year-old girls as being normal, or wanting to date your own daughter as being normal. That's what's happened, and I, I God knows how. Except that. He stands up and says it's okay to be racist, and that message is so attractive to so many people that they'll overlook everything else. Sophie's in Cobham. Sophie, what is going on? I don't know, to be honest with you. I find that really shocking. Disturbing. That people somehow can find an excuse. There is no excuse. You cannot see your daughter sexually even if she's 10 or 20 or 50, the point is, the fact that you can even admit that she's beautiful enough to be dating her just shows sexual thinking instead of normal thinking. I have children. I can say my son is handsome. I certainly don't think I should be dating him or even cross my mind. The idea that he sh should he be someone else, I would date him because you should never see your children in a sexual way anyway. The point is, with Trump, what I think it is, is from the start, it started as a joke. People just assume he was just this ridiculous fool that can come up with crap. And to be honest with you, you start wondering how the hell did he even make money with money when you listen to his nonsense. But what's sad now is someone else earlier made a point, and I think you do, is the fact that simply we think it's okay now for him to come up with comments. It's not because he's stupid. It's not because he's a fool. He should be allowed to come up with comments like this. All he does is condone anything that we disagree with. That's illegal. That's not acceptable. Nor should we think it, nor should we accept it. But what, what do you understand of the people who defend him? And, and it's important to remember these are not sort of knuckle-dracking rednecks. Here's a British one on Twitter. Jamie Foster on Twitter calls himself a mild-mannered solicitor. And the clip of me um, going off on Trump a minute ago, he's retweeted saying, fascinating that his wrath doesn't extend to the wife of a sex pest who enabled him. So, I, I don't know if he really is a solicitor, I flipping hope not, but if he is, that's an educated man taking to social media to suggest that attacking somebody for being a self-confessed sex abuser is not allowed unless you also mention that his political rival's husband was once accused of some behaviour many, many decades ago. How, how have we arrived in this place where a man like that, who presumably must have gone to university if he really is a solicitor, is effectively uh, excusing the behaviour of Donald Trump? Because they think normalising the behaviour simply because of Trump's position somehow makes it okay. 
They don't understand that. It doesn't matter whether you have money or not. It's the problem. The problem is whether you're powerful or not, you shouldn't have the right. You should be treated like any so other... So it's the power. Person. It's the forelock tugging. It's, we're, we're, we're back to the kind of... He's in charge. He's a big silverback gorilla. He should be able to do whatever he wants, which is how the world ended up with Dwas de Seigneur in, uh, in bygone ages. I think we might calm down next and talk about Bob Dylan.